Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to show how to create an effect like this. So I've just got an image here which is a Vermeer painting, the girl with the pearl earring. But if we zoom in you can see that it's made up of all sorts of little particles. If I show you what that looks like unrendered, you can see there's a great many individual particles making the image up. If we go into preview render, you can see them more closely there. So it's how can we get the particles to take on the right colour for the relevant part of the image based on where they are. So we'll begin by just creating a particle. For this one we'll use a circle, go into edit mode, extrude it up a little bit and then it's out a little bit, sort of making a barrel shape, then up a bit, exact dimensions don't really matter, extrude again and again in a little bit. Fill that face, fill that face. So what we now need to do is, particularly for the top and bottom faces, we just unwrap those. So select that face, select that one, look from above in orthographic mode, press U and project from view. The sides don't matter because for my application I'm going to do these in a different colour. So let's just add a couple of colours. So we'll say new and we'll call this painting and then new again and we'll call this one black. It doesn't have to be black, it can be whatever you want. So we'll make that one just a simple diffuse that's almost black and we'll change the colour in the viewport. This is a cycles application of course. Then control plus just to increase the selection so I selected everything except that top and bottom face and we'll assign the black to that. So we'll go back to painting now, we'll change that to emission and we'll set it to an image texture which I'll make the Vermeer girl with a pearl earring image. So if we just do a quick render now we can see there's part of that image has appeared on here but as we move it around the image itself doesn't change so it doesn't matter where this was rendered it will only render that piece of the image but that'll do for our basic particle so I'll move that to another layer and we'll create a simple plane we'll scale it up and then scale it down a little on the X and now I'm going to add a particle system to the plane we'll make it a hair particle system to make it easy to control and we want it to render objects not paths and the object we want to render, we'll give it a name and we'll call this Paint Particle. So with our particle system, we'll select the Paint Particle. They're all at the wrong angle at the moment. Make sure you click Rotation on the particles, then go over to the particle, Rotate Y90. Something else to check, if you want an effect like this one, make sure that the origin point is at one end of the particle rather than in the middle. It'll just be easier that way. And now you can see the particles are upright. So we're ready to start to work on the way our particle material works now. So if we open a new window, just save this, and in that new window we go to the node editor for the material. So it's just a simple image going into an emission shader at the moment. And we'll look at the preview render, and you can see all the particles are the same right now. So I need to make sure that I've got my particle selected when I do this, and I need to add in the particle info node. We're interested in this part of the node here, which specifies the location. If I just put that straight into the vector input, you can see we start to get some interesting effects. It's not making sense yet, but not all the particles are the same color. So immediately that's one of several ways of getting different colors on particles. You can also use another node which would give you random. However, that's not what we're here to do today. We're now going to add a vector node, which is a mapping node. And we'll drop that in there. Set this to texture and start to play around with scale numbers. And there you can see, as I've started to go up, suddenly I started to get an image appear. So now I've got an idea of what the scale of my image is. And we'll go for 10 for the moment. And then we can adjust the position of the image here and here. So it's very crude particles at the moment, but you can see I've now got my image aligned. So now I can select that base area, shrink this window, and I can start to play with more particles. So we can try 5,000 particles and already you can start to see we get an interesting effect there a sort of pastels effect I can also start to add a random size and immediately now you can see that black outline because I put a ridge around it we're getting that nice black outline around each of the particles I think they're a little large at the moment and now I'll increase the random so we're getting some gaps between them so we need to add a lot more particles let's try 20,000 so immediately you can see with hardly any effort at all, we're getting this interesting artistic effect. You might not want to do this with an old classic like this, but I think it's quite interesting. You can obviously use any shape of particle and you'll still get this effect. Now I'm going to turn off the emitter so it becomes invisible and I'm going to add a plane just below. So shift A and add a plane. Put that just below this one, scale it up and then scale it in on the X. 
and this one just a basic diffuse texture we'll just lower that a little bit so that it is just below the particles it's just below them there maybe a little bit bigger look from above and look at a preview render of that and if we zoom in what you can see now is that the lighter colored plane underneath is actually being illuminated by the emission texture on these particles so it sort of does a sort of fill in where there's a gap and it makes it smoother and we can play with that color we can turn it to black and it disappears completely or just fade it up slightly or have it completely white when it completely fills it in you can even add color to it sort of get some even weirder effect whatever you want to do and that's really all there is to creating this effect I hope you find that useful. If you did, let me know. If you've got any comments or suggestions for other tutorials, I always read them. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.